Explore Learning Gizmos are online, interactive simulations that help build deep understanding in science and math. This video gives teachers a peek into a real classroom to see what teaching with gizmos can look like when used in small collaborative groups. Gizmo. Remember, you're only responsible to the factor assigned to you. We want to see how those different variables will affect our will affect the rate of photosynthesis. And you guys are good? Okay. <laughs> Miss Laura, you all right? Oh, yeah. You guys are working on? Online intensity. Okay, so you're both. Okay. Which one are we working on? On the color. Okay. As you can see, Ms. Lanty's high school students in Irving, Texas, have been studying photosynthesis. After reviewing the components of the photosynthesis reaction, Ms. Lanty divides the students into groups to test what effects each component has on the rate of photosynthesis. You increase the temperature. Let's raise our hands. You think it would? I think it would go slower because it would like make the water um, evaporate. You think it will evaporate? Okay, that's a thought. What do you think? I think it wouldn't matter. You think it wouldn't matter? Any particular reason? Because it could be rather cold and the water could still be there or it could be hot, but the, like, the amount of water wouldn't be like, evaporated as fast. Okay, okay. Hey. I think it does matter. You think it matters? <laughs> Why do you think it matters? Because it all depends on where you put a plant. Like if you put it in a cold area, then the amount of, of photosynthesis it does will probably won't be as much as you would if you put a plant in a warm area. Okay, so we have a fight going on. So we'll see what the gizmo says. So that's a very, and I, I'm glad you have different predictions. Do you think temperature is at 30? That's good. And you're at zero. Then slowly drag the carbon dioxide slider to, to the right. Okay, so slowly, and then as you do that, go ahead to, that's when it says go ahead and select the graph. Okay, and then you're going to record data at different points. So you're on the second step, what happened to the rate? You're still working on that, okay. Any questions on it? What do you think will happen? The students work together to gather data from the gizmo, recording their observations, and graphing their results. In your group, if you are done, you're going to send one person to just briefly write your answers on the board, okay? So if it's in light intensity, one person can record those who are done already and plot a rough graph on there for us so we can have a good idea. What do you mean, like on Each group contributes their information to the board and then copies the other group's data into their notebooks for analysis. Once students have data from all of the variables, they begin to develop scientific explanations to answer the investigation's question, how does each variable affect the rate of photosynthesis? How those different things affected photosynthesis? Did they increase it? Did they decrease it? Yay! But I want to read one so you can have a good idea, okay? Um, Kelsey, her claim is you need a certain amount of carbon dioxide, light intensity, wavelength, and temperature for photosynthesis to produce at its highest. Then her evidence, you need the temperatures to be at 26 degrees centigrade, light intensity at 38, carbon dioxide at 3, wavelength at blue for photosynthesis to be highest according to our data. Okay? Then reasoning, she's working on it. So most of you are still working on your reasoning, but that's, you know, that's a good overall conclusion, don't you think? Using gizmos with small groups of students requires a computer with internet access for each group of two or three students. Gizmos can be used to conduct experiments, to construct scientific explanations, or to address creative challenges. As you saw in this example video, when students work together on a gizmo, they can engage in higher level thinking and problem solving. 
asking students to define and test hypotheses, and then create scientific explanations supported by evidence from the gizmo is a great way to engage in scientific inquiry. Thanks for watching this movie. For more information on gizmos, go to explorelearning.com.